Cheers and welcome in. I am Jay Bar, and today we are looking at a suite of products from Prism XR. I'm very excited to show you these today because these are all products that kind of stand out in the VR accessory market right now. Big shout out to Prism XR for partnering with me on this and sending me all these products and all they have asked me to do here was to check them out and review them for you folks. Here's what we're gonna be going over today. We have the Polaris A1, which is meant to attack motion sickness when playing VR. We have the Karina W1, which is a massive 10,000 mAh battery that you can wear around your waist or bandolier style. We've got the Vega T1s, which are specifically designed for low latency audio when playing VR. And lastly, we have the Puppus S1, which is a Wi-Fi adapter designed for PC VR gameplay with your standalone headsets. This one you want to stick around and learn about. This has really changed the way that I've played VR. Starting with the Polaris A1 meant for motion sickness, this one was interesting to me because I do get a ton, a ton of comments about people asking how to combat motion sickness, and I am really bad at answering those questions because somehow I was gifted with the ability to not get motion sick. So I really couldn't use these myself and tell you how they work, but luckily I have a guinea pig in the house, and that is my fiance who gets ridiculously motion sick all the time. It's bad enough where she can't even watch most of my videos where I'm playing VR, or at least that's what she told me. Honey? Apparently her motion sickness is real. Anyways, I did have her try this out a couple times now when she was happening to have a couple bouts of motion sickness, and she let me know that it did seem to work. You get 15 packs of these one-time use patches in the box, and these use herbal ingredients in order to help combat your motion sickness. And here are the ingredients on the screen. And the box includes this nice little carrying case to make it easy for you to bring this wherever you go. To show you real quick how to use it, open up the pack here, and the packs contain two of these herbal patches that are covered with a thin paper layer. And they're all magnetic, so you just wanna snap them in and match them to the lip. There's a little lip on there that you wanna match them to. Make sure they snap right in like that on each side. And once they're in, again, since I don't need it, I'm not gonna pull the paper off, but you take the paper right off. And the point of this neck band is to apply a little bit of pressure under here, which apparently can also help with motion sickness. And in about seven minutes, this would kick in and help alleviate any problems that someone would be having. And I do want to add a bit of a disclaimer here. Motion sickness, as a lot of you probably know, is a bit of a touchy thing. Everyone has it a bit differently. Some people have it more severely than others. So I really can't say that this is going to 100% work for you if you do get motion sickness while playing VR. But if that's a problem that you have, this could be worth a shot if you haven't found a way to help it yet. I did notice that they currently don't sell additional packs of the patches on their website. So I asked and it sounds like they will be adding that soon. All right, now let's take a look at the Karina W1 battery pack. This has a 10,000 mAh battery with 30 watt super fast charging, and here it is. So let's see what we have in the box here. We have the 10,000 mAh battery, a couple of straps that connect to the battery so we can put it around our waist or bandolier style, a piece for some cable management, and your USB-C to USB-C charging cable. Just uncoiling the straps. So once you kind of get it on there, this can be adjusted as well, depending on your waist size. Get the other one on there, and our belt is ready. Just to show you how you attach it around your waist, it is very simple. It magnets right on there. And it's got a pretty strong connection here, so it doesn't fall off during your gaming session. This little cable management piece they include as well is meant to go on the back of your head strap, whichever kind of head strap you have, so that it can manage the cable and keep it behind your head so it's not touching you on the sides or anything like that. So once you have the belt all set up, you can attach the charging cable to the battery as well as your device. And now you can enjoy extra long VR sessions without the dreaded battery low message. You also get a battery level indicator with the button at the very top here. I think this is a pretty awesome battery and a really cool solution for keeping the battery weight off of your head. And here we have the Vega T1 earbuds. I've actually used the Vega T1s during my last couple of streams with my Quest 3 and I have absolutely loved them. The carrying slash charging case here comes with both your earbuds as well as the USB-C adapter that also has USB-C pass-through charging. So you can use these, have ultra low latency audio, and still be charging your Quest. I absolutely love these things. I kind of didn't even notice I had them in during my streaming sessions. They're very comfortable. Nothing about them hurts my ears. In the box, you also get different earpieces to match your size of ears. The ones that kind of came with it so far are, I think, around like the middle range, and those have worked very well for me. 
You can connect these earbuds via Bluetooth, but then they are subject to the typical audio latency that comes with that. Using the dongle is your best bet to get ultra low latency audio. And then I do want to mention that Prism XR has a phone app available on the Apple and Google Play stores, and you will want to have it downloaded in order to connect your earbuds to, and it helps in case there's ever any firmware updates or anything. This is how you would be able to get those. They do have an account creation process and a login, but I thought it was a nice touch that you really can skip all of that. You don't really need the account Account on the app in order to configure your devices here. Now to get my Vega earbuds connected to my phone via Bluetooth so they can work with the app, I am going to open the case, hold this button for a moment, and we want to see that blue light start blinking just like that. So while they're in pairing mode, I'm going to go to my Bluetooth settings on my phone and have it search for devices. I'm going to select Prism XR Vega T1 and allow that to pair. Now that I'm shown connected via Bluetooth, they are available on the app itself. From here, once you're connected, you can kind of configure these a little bit for your ideal scenario. You can choose custom where you can actually set up your own EQ settings. You can select default and go between any of these default equalizer settings, which will allow you to really fine tune how you want to hear your audio. And then there's the Vega Blast option, which if you really want to increase the gain, on your audio, you can turn this on. There's a little warning that it can reduce sound quality, which is accurate, right? If you are increasing audio higher than it's meant to be increased, you are gonna get a little bit lower audio quality. I have actually kept mine on default so far and it has worked great. I can also take the dongle out of the case here and plug it right in to my Quest 3, just like so. You will also see a little blue LED indicator on there. And when I hit dongle on my phone now, it shows that it is connected. You also have more controls over the touch features that are included on these earbuds as well, where you can choose what happens when you single tap between changing volume settings, changing songs, or you can disable that in general. You can have different controls per the left or the right earbud, which I thought was really neat. There's also double tap settings and settings when you hold for two seconds. One really cool feature of these is that you can actually use both the Bluetooth and the dongle at the same time with this chat mix feature. And what that really means is, just like it says on the app here, is you could be playing something in VR and still hear a call come in from your phone or you could be connected to Discord on your phone and chatting with friends, or you can even have it connected via Bluetooth to your PC and chat with friends through Discord that way or whatever other app you want. And of course there is settings here for it where you can check all of your information. The firmware section here allows you to check if you are fully up to date with the firmware and it will let you know if you're not. I definitely think these earbuds are winners. I've been able to use them with my Quest 3 for hours without feeling any sort of discomfort or anything like that. I know some people aren't really earbud people, but I have found these to be very comfortable. So these get a big thumbs up from me. And now onto the device that I've been really excited to show you guys and has truly changed how I play VR on my main PC VR setup, the Puppus S1. Puppus S1 looks like this out of the box. No, this is not a miniature PlayStation 5. This is the actual device. The cable that comes with it has a USB-C connection that goes into the device itself. And then you have two USB cables, one's 3.0, one's 2.0. And the important thing about these is that you do need to plug at least this one in 3.0. This can be 2.0 or both can be plugged into 3.0, whatever you have available to you. Another important thing to note is that it does matter how you put in the USB-C cable. There is a right and a left side to the actual cable. And on the Puppus itself, it tells you which side is the right and the left when you connect it. So make sure you have those lined up correctly. The instructions also say you can use a USB-C to USB-C cable, but they do not include one in the box and you need to make sure your PC has a port for it, but that would also be a good option. When it comes to using PC VR through standalone headsets, seamlessness and ease of use are incredibly important. It's really frustrating when you have to reset things up all the time or if you have to cable things into your network. Let me show you how easy this thing is to use. I'm gonna get it plugged into my PC here. You got a button on the top that allows you to switch between certain modes, which I'll explain in a moment. And you got these LED indicators on the front. The very top LED is an indicator for their prism pulse mode for connecting it to your headset. The middle LED is an indicator for your internet connection. And the bottom LED is a status indicator. The top LED, which is for the prism pulse mode, will flash blue like it is now when it's pending a connection to your headset. 
it will be solid blue when your headset's connected. It's going to be orange when it's connected, but the prism pulse mode is abnormal, so there's an issue with the connection. It'll be red if the connection has failed entirely. For the internet indicator, it's going to be red when the internet's disconnected and blue when it is connected. And the status indicator is going to flash white when it's in Bluetooth connecting mode, yellow when the S1 is in Wi-Fi hotspot mode, purple when the S1 is in Wi-Fi adapter mode, and red if it's powered on but operating abnormally i.e. there is a issue with your connection. And for the set button at the very top, you can press it one time to reconnect to the Prism Pulse mode, which you could use, say, if you were in the Bluetooth mode or one of the other modes. You can hold it down for more than three seconds to change between the Prism Pulse mode, the hotspot mode, or the adapter mode, which that status indicator on the front will tell you which mode you are currently in. And you can press and hold it down for 10 seconds or more in order to re-enter pairing mode so you can pair it with the Prism XR app. And of course, there's a reset button on the back in case you want to fully factory reset the device. Now that we're all plugged in, we just need to open up our Prism XR app. You're going to hit plus on the top right if this is your first time connecting it. And that status indicator should be blinking white as you are doing this. And then you'll hit Puppus S1 in order to get it connected. For me, I have already had it connected, so I'm going to click on here. And then it's going to show me that we need to connect it to my PC and then to my phone here so that we can set it up. So I'm just going to press the set button on the top one time and right away it switched over and connected to my phone since I have had it previously connected. If you haven't before to Bluetooth, you will need to go to your Bluetooth settings and pair a new device and select your Puppus S1. Now that I'm connected, it's going to show me that we do have a PC connection. The internet connection portion is really not that important unless you're trying to use it as a hotspot. I typically have this disconnected because I am connecting directly to the Puppus S1, which is connected to my PC. So I really don't need to be getting internet through the Puppus because I get that through my PC connection to my network. But to get it connected to your headset, you can go into the settings here by clicking Puppus S1 and you can set up a password on here if you would like. Everything else here can stay default. I just added a password to mine and then I didn't touch anything else. I'm just going to throw on my Quest 3 and what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the Prism Pulse Wi-Fi adapter. But now that I'm on my quest here, I'm just going to click on Wi-Fi and we are going to connect to Prism Pulse here. Before you're connected, the top status indicator should be flashing blue and then once you're connected, it should be solid blue. So if I look at it through my quest here, yep, it just turned solid blue. So we are fully connected and good to go. I am a big fan of virtual desktop, so I'm going to hop in there, but I will tell you from testing it out a bit, AirLink has worked fantastic with this setup. I typically was having some weird connections with AirLink here and there, but I haven't had any issues since using the Puppus with AirLink. However, virtual desktop is king for me, so we are going to be using that. You can tell up top here we have a 5 gigahertz 2401 megabit per second connection, which this connection stays really solid. I can actually walk down my hall into my downstairs living room and then it goes a little below 2000 typically, but uh, as long as I'm staying in the room with it or at least nearby, I am getting a very strong connection. What the Puppus has allowed me to do now with my PC VR setup is I can keep desktop bitrate here to 100 as well as VR bitrate to 200. Once we do that, I can launch right into Steam VR wherever I'm at and I am ready to play games. I have tested this out during multiple of my live streams now and it has worked flawlessly. The fact that the Puppus has allowed me to really streamline my PC VR wireless setup using a Quest device, it's completely changed the way that I play PC VR. I had still been dealing with my index setup mainly because it was so reliable. I could just throw it on, hop in the game and be ready to go. But I was still dealing with that pesky cable which would require me to spin in circles just to unwind it all the time. The Puppus has really given me this stress-free, streamlined experience where I can just connect to it once I'm on my quest, hop into virtual desktop, get into Steam VR, and I'm ready to play. I really can't say enough how much I appreciate how easy to use this thing is. And there you have it. I think the Puppus was definitely the highlight out of this suite of products, but all of them have really impressed me in terms of just how they work, how easy they are to use, and just the value they bring to my VR experience. If any of these products interested you, or if you have any further questions about them, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Remember to hit that subscribe button in order to see what I come out with next, and we will see you out there.